Why are y'all so scared all the time? Hey guys and girls. What's up, it's Jay back again. The, pain, the, the Painter Fool back again with another episode here. For those who don't know me, I am an artist, a tech nerd, gamer, lover of everything that has freedom attached to it, and <laughs> product reviews, beauty, and, and fragrances. I love a lot of things, and I'm a big ass kid. If you haven't checked out my previous video explaining my audiobook, just a, a brief summary of my audiobook, go ahead and check that out. My audiobook is titled The Journey in Four Series, and it's a children's audiobook from ages 10 and up. Uh, it just describes the journey of a boy going through different challenges and overcoming a lot of different struggles, but it's presented in a very cool, neat way. Listen to it with headphones. It has sound elements that I've added to it that you'll enjoy. Before we begin, make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button. And of course, share the videos. Sharing is caring. Care for me while I care for you. Just hit that button. Thanks. We have two new visitors today on the, on the artist table. We have a new friend of mine, Aquaman. Then of course we have here an amazing book titled Solutions for Dysfunctional Families, Healing and Avoiding the Aftermath of Cross-Cultural Unions and the Suicidal Family. The author is Haru Yuya T. Asan Anu. You can find the book on Amazon and um, it's really good. I think there's also uh, an ebook. There's a Kindle version and then there's a, there's a hard copy version of the book. Very informative book. It talks about mating, talks about culture and it's, it's a great book that gives you some insight on to date intelligently, choosing your partners intelligently, choosing a family for yourself intelligently. And um, it's a great guide for myself. So I said, um, this is something that is very important. I felt the need to put out there. I haven't finished it all the way. You know, Haru Yuya Asana knew he, ha he writes books where, you know, although they may not be thick books, there's something you should read again and again and again. Let's talk about my little homie over here. Aquaman. Let's open them up. First of all, I love these things. Once you buy one, you're probably going to want them all. There's a couple of these I need to get. I'm going to grab a Catwoman one. I'm going to probably grab all of the Game of Thrones ones. I had a Harley Quinn one, but the head popped off. Don't ask me how. I'm going to have a whole little big headed family sitting in my house. This is what he looks like. All right, so let's just talk about the topic. You know how many of you have great messages to share, but your anxiety is, is getting in the way and, and creating obstacles for you to get it done? And probably me saying that just gave you more anxiety about the anxiety you already have, because I already know. Sometimes even like, you'll hear people that you, you admire, you look up to, and they're giving this information that's just pulling up your subconscious fears and issues, and you're dealing with a lot of anxiety. The fact that they're shedding light on your issues is actually making you more anxious and instead, instead of it helping or, or healing you. And it's not their fault. It has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with you. I know because I've been there. I'm like, oh my God, this is so true. Now I have to face it. Now I have to change it. Or I'll just hold off a little bit longer and, and let let the fear kind of just take me for a little longer and just take this journey and, and do what I got to do with it. But it happens all the time. We are presented with so much insight on issues and things that need to be addressed. And we just, we kind of delay our own growth and we delay our own development because of that. And I've said this before in um, my fisherman video. It's a common thing. It took me a very long time just as an artist, putting myself out there as an artist because I felt like I wasn't good enough. And not only that, it was my arrogance at the time was afraid of being corrected or being afraid of receiving constructive criticism about my work. Now I welcome it. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to share with you just some things to note for those who are maybe dealing with some fears or social anxieties or maybe like the fear of sharing your story or putting yourself out there. You know what I mean? Because a lot of us have a story to tell. Many of us will tell our stories in different ways but sometimes we are afraid of stepping out there because of a multitude of reasons. Some of you are afraid of being corrected in public or feeling as though if I put myself out there, I'm too, I'm being too vulnerable. 
and I leave myself exposed for opinions and maybe someone correcting me or maybe someone offering something that I may not like, giving me criticisms I may not like or whatever the case is. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is that where you're afraid of speaking, you're afraid of speaking publicly. Let me just tell you, I've come a long way. So the person you see now <laughs> has not been the person for uh, that I've been here for the, for a very long time. Now granted, I'll say this, as a child, <laughs> I've been, I remember being a lot more outspoken. And over the t over time of years, I kind of just shut that person down. I guess fears and different things took over and different traumas and experiences took over that kind of took me away from being as outspoken as I slowly become, putting myself out there like that. What grew me to change, what caused me to change was a couple things. One, I knew that I have something within me that I would like to share with the world. I knew that I wanted to put myself out there as an artist, first of all. And then I said, there's there's some things with just as I'm growing and as I'm developing, I'd like to bring to other people to help them through their issues and help them in other, in other ways. However, I just didn't know how to go about it. Like I had, I had different thoughts and I, I, I had different fantasies of how this thing would happen. I didn't really know how to approach it though. And again, I just was afraid of, of speaking. It just, it took, it took a long time, you know, and I dealt with a lot of self-doubt. I dealt with a lot of personal, like a lot of self-antagonism. Dealt with a lot of laziness or procrastination. I've just, I've been afraid of just taking myself out of my comfort zone. Over time, however, the more I became, the more different, different things called me to put myself out as someone in the center. It started, it, it was started about, 2017 when I decided to just really put myself out there and and not be ashamed of who I am. I've been called to lead in many different cases where I didn't I never expected that I would ever be called to lead in. For instance, one random day I was hit up by a representative in the student government uh, of my community college at the time who wanted me to to lead an art class, to instruct an art class for the community college and it would be recorded and placed on their YouTube channel and on their webs, you know, just all over the place. And I, it was, it was my first time ever being in that position to where I was being put or, or broadcasted in a very public setting. So I didn't know how I was going to be able to handle that. But at the same time, it was like deep down, I had the courage to put myself out there in these streets. I just didn't, you know, I, I dealt with a lot of doubt. I dealt with telling myself I wasn't good enough. I've dealt with being told I wasn't good enough. I've dealt with just different issues with my life. And I think over time I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's what's gonna to happen to a lot of you. You're going to become sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're not going to, eventually you're gonna be like, listen, I'm tired of putting myself in situations where I'm tired of hiding what I need to say. I'm tired of being so afraid of speaking my mind, you know, because you're gonna be called to speak your mind at some point. And as much as you try to run from it, it's coming. <laughs> your story is going to be shared in so many different ways and it's, it may not be in the degree where you're going to be on a YouTube channel. You may not be speaking in front of a podium. You may write it. You may be an author. You might share your story being a, um, a leader in, in, your, in your job or you might have your own company and you, might, you may share your story behind your computer desk. However it happens, there's going to be a point in time where you're going to be called to share your story. I am thankful for all of those who have been there for me and that have helped me and supported me. It's been a long process. And putting yourself out there is not necessarily having this bubbly personality and just changing your personality to match the average person that you see, especially if you're interested in a YouTube channel or whatever you're doing, whatever you're looking at, whether that's, you know, people do seminars or whatever the case is. Now granted, these different tactics and being presentable as a public speaker are very important. They keep your audience's attention and their interest. However, you may not be the one that may have all that extra extravagant, flamboyant personalities that so many different people have. You might be the very calm one and people just may gravitate and attract to that because not everybody's interested in seeing all these different personalities as kind of blaring and shining and different things like that. But that's not that's don't focus on that don't focus on trying to be someone that you're not because uh i'm not interested personally and i've learned that it takes more energy being someone you're not versus just doing you don't get so wrapped up in trying to win everyone over because you're definitely going to someone's going to be connected to you in some way shape or form just trust and believe 
How much longer is it going to take for you to get through your fears, especially when you're at the tail end, you're at the very tail end of this tunnel? How much longer was it going to take? Will you need that extra push to get you just out during these streets? What's it going to take? For me, it just took, I just got tired of it. I got tired of sitting in one spot. I got tired of being afraid. I got tired. I actually just legitimately grew tired of it. I think Aquaman agrees. You think? No? Yeah? I know so many of y'all are like, where's your artwork? I want to see your art. You know, you have art in your intro. Where's your paintings? Listen, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm doing a lot behind the scenes. I'm just not putting everything out there prematurely like I used to. I'm not doing a bunch of coming soons. I'm not doing all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to just drop it. Not to mention, for these past couple months, I've been consistently creating. I've been consistently instructing and I've been in, I've been painting for a very long time. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to give yourself a little bit of a break because I'm still doing things artistically. It's just that it's not all out there publicly yet. So yeah, just, just give me some time to begin to see all of who I am as time, as time progresses. So with all that said, I am out. Please be sure to follow me on my Instagram channels. I'll leave that all that in the description box as well. On my Instagram page or source code Tyro also it's uh, The Painted Fool. You'll find me there. And I have a Facebook group as well. And I'm on Twitter. However, yeah, follow me there. And um, let's continue to build. And I'm going to continue to, to share and, and give myself. And um, willing that you learn something from this and that it helps you in some way, shape, or form. And that it frees you from a couple things. So until next time, I'm out. See you guys. And uh, bye.